my lovely, lovely imps, we need to talk about Joe Biden again. Because things are not improving on the Joe Biden front. It has been uh, 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 <laughs> it has been a rough couple of days, uh, and things are not looking up for Joe Biden. In fact, a lot of people might say that things are looking down. Today, which is to say when this is recorded, the 5th of July, Joe Biden made a very loud public statement that he will not be stepping down. Now, the reason why there's even a discussion around Joe Biden stepping down is because uh, his debate performance was so bad uh, and his following public appearances have been so bad that there is a genuine crisis of faith within the Democratic Party. Now, let me just show you what Joe Biden said today, just a few hours ago, before we started streaming. Let me say this as clearly as I can. I'm the sitting president of the United States. I'm the nominee of the Democratic Party. I'm staying in the race. Now, this echoes what his team has been saying to the public for days. And obviously, we wouldn't expect a president to, like, immediately... Uh, uh, give up and back out of the race because of one bad debate performance. However, this has not just been one bad debate performance. His entire party is currently in shambles. And I mean that. The entire Democratic network is in shambles. And nobody can agree on what the right path is forward. And every day, Joe Biden keeps making public appearances that make him look worse. We are going to look at some of these in just a minute. This statement, however goes above and beyond simply just saying, we're going to beat Donald Trump. It is him explicitly saying that he has no intention of stepping down, that he's the nominee, that he's the president, and that he's the only option. Basically, Joe Biden is saying, yes, Donald Trump is the most dangerous uh, uh, president the United States ever had. Yes, democracy is going to crumble. Yes, Donald Trump is threatening a fascist takeover. But I'm more important than all of that, so you better vote for me. It's not good. It's not good. Donald Trump has been surging in the number in the polls. Biden's approval has been dropping. Numerous polls show Biden uh, uh, trailing increasingly behind Donald Trump. And what we have gotten has been a series of absolutely disastrous uh, reports from the Joe Biden camp. First of all, let me talk about one that just happened very recently. Let's take a look at this together, shall we? This is from CNN. CNN reports, Biden tells Democratic governors he needs more sleep and plans to stop scheduling events after 8 p.m. President Joe Biden told Democratic governors during a meeting at the White House on Wednesday that a part of his plan going forward is to stop scheduling events after 8 o'clock p.m. so that he can get more sleep, according to three sources briefed on his comments. The remarks, first reported by the New York Times, came as the 81-year-old Biden sought to reassure a group of more than 20 state leaders about his ability to defeat former President Donald Trump in November. Now, it isn't really about his bedtime. Not exactly. However, it is very, very, very bad that after a disastrous showing on a debate stage, on an international stage, in which it truly appeared as though Joe Biden was suffering some form of dementia symptoms, um, that he then follows up, thank you very much, he then follows up by immediately confirming that he will no longer be doing things at night. 
Now, some people who are uh, watching and listening might not know this. And while I don't think that it's good generally, as a general practice, to speculate exceedingly over people's health, one of the most common and severe uh, and indicative symptoms of dementia is sundowning. What sundowning is, uh, is a basically a decline in mental function once the sun goes down. It is incredibly common. Uh, it is, uh, there are various theories as to what it, what ties into it, but basically people who have dementia have a severe tendency that once it starts to get a little bit later in the night, their symptoms get significantly worse. Joe Biden responding to all of this by saying no more events after 8 p.m. as he is running to currently be the president of the United States of America is a very, very bad, a very bad sign. It's a very bad look and it's also a bad sign. It is possible that Joe Biden is not struggling with dementia. It is possible that he has a perfectly clean bill of health and that he's just struggling generally. However, I do think this is reason for concern, and I completely understand why a lot of people find this to be a very bad sign, especially given everything else that has been going on. Of course, everyone's saying being the president is a 24-7 job, but also, it's kind of crazy that the only real response that the Biden team has had to his truly disastrous debate performance has been, uh, well, it must be because the debate was held at nine. A fit president should be able to do an event at nine once in a while. And also, staying up till 9 p.m. is not, uh, it, that's, that's not what causes any of this. You could have said anything for that, but they keep saying, oh, it was a little late. He had a cold. It's ridiculous. It's, it's frankly, it feels like systemic gaslighting. Let me show you another thing, okay, real quick. Some other just news pieces that have been very concerning. This is a quote from the Wall Street Journal, okay? The Wall Street Journal wrote an article talking about uh, Joe Biden's top donors who made statements to the Wall Street Journal. These are people who have given lots of money to Joe Biden, okay? Some of President Biden's top donors have latched on to a Star Wars analogy aimed at keeping nervous supporters from defecting. President Biden is like Yoda, old and frail, yet wise and influential, whereas Donald Trump is like Jabba the Hutt, gluttonous and a gluttonous and powerful gangster. Now, for a number of reasons, making a comparison to Yoda is a really bad idea. First of all, because <laughs> if we're talking about the original trilogy, Yoda notably dies before the, before the resolution of the plot, significantly before the resolution of the plot. If we're talking about the prequels, Yoda is a character who is so blinded by his own self-confidence, by his own blind faith in the Order, that he cannot see a Sith Lord directly next to him. So no matter what way they were trying to go with this, framing Joe Biden as Yoda is like the absolute worst decision they could have made. I don't know what the fuck these people were thinking. Oh yeah, sorry. There's one more, or sorry, two more stories I wanna to touch on before we get into watching a couple of clips of Joe Biden to kinda of hammer home what I'm talking about. The first one is that there have now been multiple reports that are showing that 
high dollar donors are beginning to bail on Biden. The whole uh, Yoda analogy was don't some donors trying to convince other donors not to jump ship, but a number of donors are currently jumping ship. We're going to have to see at the end of this month when donor statements are released, whether or not Joe Biden takes a significant hit. It's too early to tell, but the fact that there are enough people talking about it and that other high earning donors felt the need to make a public statement comparing Joe Biden to Yoda seems very concerning to me. Additionally, there has now been word that Hunter Biden has been present has been present in a number of meetings with Biden, which is very weird. This is from NBC News. Hunter Biden has joined meetings with President Biden and his top aides this week at the White House. Four people familiar with the matter tell my colleagues who are told the reaction from senior White House staff has been, what the hell is happening? Now, having your family nearby you uh, as a president or whatever is not that strange. But it is pretty weird when shortly after your disastrous debate performance, you start to have your controversial but very closely attached son present with you at meetings that he normally wasn't present in. A lot of different news outlets have talked about this. It's pretty strange. It's also not a very good look for his campaign at this point. It indicates that perhaps his family is circling the wagons because they know just how bad it really is. Now, we can't know for sure. All of this is a little bit speculative, but we're kind of reading the signs. We're kind of seeing some very weird behaviors that are very out of the normal all of a sudden popping up. Abigail Disney, heir to the Disney family fortune, has threatened to withhold her financial support from the Democratic Party if President Joe Biden doesn't drop out of the race. In a statement to CNBC on Thursday, Disney said she will halt her contributions to the Democrats unless and until they replace Biden at the top of the ticket. A longtime donor to liberal causes, Disney said the stakes are far too high for Biden to continue running. If Biden does not step down, the Democrats will lose. Of that, I am absolutely certain. The consequences for the loss will be genuinely dire. Disney has called for Vice President Kamala Harris to, co to, come over, to take over as the Democratic nominee. Disney joins a, a chorus of major Democratic Party donors who have called for Biden to step down from the ticket as his campaign scrambles to contain the fallout from his underwhelming debate performance. Underwhelming? Disastrous. On Wednesday, Reed Hastings, the Netflix co-founder who donated more than 20 million to Democrats. Jesus fucking Christ. 20 million dollars? Mariah Fund President Gideon, Gideon Stein also told CNBC that he is withholding $3.5 million that was meant for groups tied to the presidential election. Virtually every major donor I've talked to believes that we need a new candidate in order to defeat Donald Trump. Okay? These are not Trumpists. Okay? They are ridiculously rich oligarchs, but they are not Trumpists. These aren't people who are trying to make Donald Trump win. These are people acknowledging the fact that Joe Biden is in shambles. By the way, for the record, we're going to talk about this a little more later after I get through some of these uh, things we got to watch together. But I believe very strongly if Joe Biden is you know, maintains the ticket, if he does not step down, excuse me, that Donald Trump will be president. I do not have any reason to believe that Joe Biden is going to improve. I have no reason to believe that his popularity will bounce back in any way. I don't see anything 
changing positively for Joe Biden between now and November, and what and it is very possible that Joe Biden makes it worse. Can you imagine if Joe Biden does a second debate and cannot get through the debate on international TV, every person in the world potentially having access to him being completely incapable of debating because he's gotten worse? Holy shit. Can you even imagine how bad it will get? Paul's ego says he's been in shambles for a long time too. Yeah, Joe Biden has always struggled. He's been getting worse, but it's really bad. Like this is inarguable now. He's always he's always had issues and politically his platform has been weak. Joe Biden doesn't even have a fucking platform published. His website is all just donations. He has no platform. He hasn't put out a platform for what he's running for. He has no heirs. He has no support. He's not setting up for anybody to run against whoever comes next four years from now. So yeah, politically he's been in shambles. But but um, as far as his public presentation, this is the worst it's ever been. There's never been a moment this bad so far. But otherwise, I do agree with you. He hasn't been a mess in a lot of ways. I completely understand that. Paul says, Palestine ruined him forever and always for me. I will not vote for genocide. I, he deserves the title Genocide Joe. No doubt. Absolutely. Okay. I want to watch a couple of clips. Okay? Because, uh... Joe Biden's had some issues, okay? He's had some, uh, he's had some I've moments. All... Okay, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Let me get these queued up real quick. Joe Biden has had a number of moments in the last couple of days that are not looking hot, okay? And I want to, I want us to, to listen to these and hear for ourselves that he is not, there, it is very unlikely that he is going to be bouncing back from this. These are post the debate. Okay? Let me bring these up, okay? And we're just going to sit sit and stew on these real quick. All right. All right, let's start with the first one. This one's a short one. Let's see it. This was from his 4th of July speech. Ready? And by the way, I've been all over the world with you. I've been in and out of battle anyway. And by the way, I've been all over the world with you. I've been in and out of battle anyway. And by the way. The first bit, you could say, was a stutter. You know, being I've been all over the, that's a stutter. That's a stumble. But just stopping the sentence and saying anyway in the middle? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. He's been giving up in the middle of thoughts over and over and over again. Here's another one. This is not a stutter. I'll beat Donald Trump. I will beat him again in 2020. By the way, we're going to do it again in 2024. I'll beat Donald Trump. I'll beat him again in 2020. And then we'll do it again in 2024. In a vacuum, he just misspoke. With everything else, dude, what is going on? He didn't say, like, I mean 2024. He just said, we'll beat him again in 2020, and then I'll do it again in 2024. By the way, there's been insane coping about this one. This one's another one, all right? This was from a, um, this was from a, a, a Philly radio show, okay? Take a listen to this Joe Biden talking on a radio show in Philly, okay? This is just from the other day. All right, let's take a listen. This one, this one's rough. By the way, I'm proud to be, as I said. Sorry, that's a little loud. Let me tune that down just a tiny bit. 
Take a listen. By the way, I'm proud to be, as I said, the first vice president, first black woman mm -hmm. to serve with a black president. Mm -hmm. I'm proud to have all the first black woman in the Supreme Court. There's just so much that we can do because together we, there's nothing. Look, this is the United States. By the way, I'm proud. By the way, I'm proud. Proud to be, as I said. I'm proud to be, as I said. The first vice president. The first vice president. First black woman. First black mm -hmm. woman. With a black president. Who served with mm -hmm. a black proud president. The, all the first black woman in the Supreme Court. There's just so much that we can do because together we. Can. There's so much we can do because together. There's nothing. Look, this look, is the United States. This By is the way, United States. This is deranged. I'm proud, like I said, to be the first black woman vice president served under a black president. The black woman on the Supreme Court. There's so much we can do. Look, this is America now. Was this edited together? This is real. This was from a radio show. We got more though. You think all of those are a little short? Let's see how he does when we give him a whole fucking minute and 10 seconds. Did you ever watch the debate after? This is from his interview with George Stephanopoulos. I don't think I did, no. Well, what, I'm trying, what I want to get at is, what were you experiencing as you were going through the debate? Did you know how badly it was going? Yeah, look. The whole way I prepared, nobody's fault of mine. Nobody's fault of mine. I, uh, I prepared what I usually would do, sitting down, as I did come back with foreign leaders or the National Security Council, for explicit detail. And I realized about uh, part... Let me just hear that again real quick. Come back with foreign leaders or... I prepared what I usually would do, sitting down, as I did come back with foreign leaders or the National Security Council for explicit detail. And I realized about partway through that, you know, all the, I get quoted, the New York Times had me down at 10 points before the debate, nine now or whatever the hell it is. The fact of the matter is that what I looked at is that he also lied 28 times. I couldn't, I mean, the way the debate ran, not my fault, no one else's fault, no one else's fault. But when it seemed like you were having... What? What the fuck is he saying? Actually incomprehensible. I, I just, I don't even know. That's, that, that was an uninterrupted minute of nonsense. And he didn't even answer the question in a one-on-one -on -one setting. Trouble from the first question in, even before he spoke. Well, I just had a bad night. Oh, that's so... Look, I... It's wrong that we should be feeling bad for Genocide Joe, but I'm not gonna lie. Even though this guy's a monster, in so many ways, from the first question in. This actually makes Even me sad. Even before he spoke. Well, I just had a bad night. Oh, God. I just had a bad night. If you, if you can grab, Grime Dango, if you have that clip from 2020, I didn't have it on hand, but I totally would. Good point. Grime Dango says, also, God, those mics are hot. He must be so quiet. You can, he, he's still quiet, even with it cranked up, the gain cranked up so loud that you can hear, like, the fibers of the, of the carpet rubbing together. We got another one, though. Unfortunately, there's another one. Apparently, this interview is going to be released unedited in the near future, which we will probably watch on stream, just so we can see with our own eyes, just so that you all, with me here in this moment, you can know that here in the Demon Mama Zone, we don't participate 
in gaslighting on behalf of the Demo Demo Democratic... Wow, there. See, now that's a stumble. Ah, I never... Just, never mind. Where were I? Uh. Here, we don't fucking participate in the gaslighting. I'm 100% K-hived. Yo, me too! And if you stay in and Trump is elected and everything you're warning about comes to- Hold on a second, gotta crank it back up again. Let's go. And everything you're warning about comes to pass, how will you feel in January? I feel as long as I gave it my all and I did the goodest job as I know I can do. That's what this is about. Look, George. That's not what this is about. This is not about, first of all, this is not about you getting a trophy for doing your bestest. Apparently this is about, and I, I agree with this statement, but according to Joe, this is about the fate of democracy. It's not about a fucking trophy. Think of it this way. You've heard me say this before. I think the United States and the world is at an inflection point. But the things that happen in the next several years are going to determine what the next six, seven decades look like. And who's going to be able to hold NATO together like me? Who's going to be able to be in a position where I'm able to keep the Pacific Basin in a position where we're, we're at least checkmating China now? Who's going to who's going to do that? Who has that? Re where we're at least checkmating China? Checkmate is a victory. I think he meant checking. Beach. Who has? Who knows all these? We're going to have. I guess a good way to judge me is you're going to have now. The NATO conference here in the United States next week. Come listen. See what they say. <sighs> Grim. By the way, we got a clip here, okay? Thank you, Grime Dango. Just for comparison, here's him back in 2020 on 60 Minutes, okay? Making. There you go. Less than $400,000 will pay a penny more in tax under my proposal. That's a promise. That's a guarantee, a promise. I give you my word as a Biden. That's an absolute guarantee. And you think it's a good idea to raise taxes when the economy is in dire straits? Depending who you're raising them on. Look, if you're raising somebody who's making a billion dollars a year, it's not a problem that they pay 39.6%, which everybody should pay, raise another $90 billion. See, there's his little speech impediment where he slurs words together and makes a little stutter. That's it. A stumble here and there. A stutter here and there. Nobody making less than 400. It's actually insane. You watch these, si here, let's just like, can we just do this? There we go, we just watched that one. We'll do it one more time immediately after. The whole way I prepared, nobody's fault of mine. Nobody's fault of mine. I, uh, I prepared what I usually would do, sitting down as I did come back with foreign leaders or the NASA. The full interview went up? Wait, is this the unedited interview or is this just the, is this the one that they've been getting clips from? Okay, so it is the full interview. Maybe we'll react to this afterwards. Okay, so here we go. One more time, just so we see it immediately after. Ready? The whole way I prepared, nobody's fault of mine. Nobody's fault of mine. I, uh, I prepared what I usually would do, sitting down as I did come back with foreign leaders or the National Security Council. Okay. $100,000 will pay a penny more in tax under my proposal. That's a promise. That's a guarantee, a promise. I give you my word as a Biden. That's an absolute guarantee. One more time. The whole way I prepared, nobody's fault of mine. Nobody's fault of mine. My God.
Kroz83 says, I gotta be honest, Demon Mama, I don't really understand the point of going over Sundown Joe content. It's just depressing Doomer fuel at this point. Maybe he gets replaced by another candidate, maybe he doesn't. Frankly, it doesn't matter because in either situation, we need to vote for whoever is not Trump. Even if Biden is clinically brain dead at the time of the election, the math doesn't change. Our sole job in terms of voting is keeping Donald Trump out of the Oval Office. Then what do you care? Then if that's it, if all that matters is just don't, just vote for whoever isn't Trump, then none of what I'm doing, none of it matters to you. None of it. I could be covering anything right now. I'm covering this because I'm tired of the fucking gaslighting. Okay? Not to blow up on you, not to pull an angry Joe on you, but I'm tired of it. It's from the top down. People are pretending and telling everyone else it's totally fucking fine. And it's not. It's not fine. What's even worse is that people on the left, people on the left who can see that it's not fine are ultimately just deferring back to electoralism. When what we need to see is that this is a symptom of a rotten system. A true, like the, the rot is, is, is inarguable, okay? This is like the, the part in the war movie where everybody, there's like a battle, you know, and they escape and they barely escape with their lives. And the one guy is hiding the fact that he got shot three scenes earlier. And finally they're sitting down and he's all sweaty and nasty. And somebody goes, what's going on? Did you get hit? And he goes, no. And they go, why are you holding your arm? And he goes, God. And then they pull it off and it's gangrenous all the way down his arm. And you find out the guy that you, you love, he's going to die because they can't treat his gangrenous wound in the field. That's what we're going through literally right this moment. It's the, oh my God, our political system is completely rotten. There's gangrene and it's terminal. The De Democratic Party is going up against the, in their words, greatest threat to democracy. And literally all they have is a guy who is completely incapable of having a moment of, of uninterrupted speech in public. We have, we have to talk about this. We have to get people to realize as soon as possible, the full extent of the rot. And just to seal the deal, I happen to have some clips just for you. Let me show you who Joe Biden and the Democratic Party are currently, uh, are currently playing games against, okay? Because right now, they're saying, I'm not going to back down. I'm the candidate. And there are a lot of people who are in lockstep with them. And this is what we're going up against, okay? We're going up against this. That we are in the process of the second American revolution, which will remain bloodless if the left allows it to be. This is the head of the Heritage Foundation talking about his plans with Project 2025. We are currently in the process of the second American revolution, which will remain bloodless if the leftists allow it to be so. I got another one for you. You want to see, you want to see the current Republican uh, uh, candidate for governorship in North Carolina? Let's take a look at this. He gave a nice little rant during one of his, uh, his church based stump speeches. Let's take a look. Idea unseen for a nation unseen. He wasn't ready for that. And you know, in a lot of ways, that's what's wrong with our country right now. We've become so highfalutin and so educated and we've all, we got Googles, we got Googles so we don't need God anymore. So we've forgotten our founding ideas, forgotten who we are, forgotten the concepts that we're fighting for. And because we have, we now find ourselves struggling with people who have evil intents. You know, it was a time when we used to meet evil on the battlefield, and guess what we did to it? We killed it. We didn't quibble about it. We didn't argue about it. We didn't fight about it. We killed it. When the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor, what did we do? We flew to Japan. And we killed the Japanese Army and Navy. We didn't even quibble about it. I didn't start this fight. You did. You wanted to be left alone. You should have left me alone. We didn't argue and capitulate and talk about, well, maybe we shouldn't fight the Nazis that hard. No, they're bad. Kill them. 
Some liberal somewhere is going to say that sounds awful. Too bad. Get mad at me if you want to. Some folks need killing. It's time for somebody to say it. It's not a matter of vengeance. It's not a matter of being mean or spiteful. It's a matter of necessity. We have wicked people doing wicked things, torturing and murdering and raping. It's time to call out uh, those guys in green and go have them handled. Or those boys in blue and have them go handle it. We need to start handling our business again because guys. My, my face win, I'm, I'm a law and order Republican who believes that the police should be executioners. They have it. What I said at the beginning about you getting in your cars. Scarlet Volcano says, who is he saying to kill? Liberals. He started this rant ranting about liberals. Listening to your radio, putting on what you want to put on, and saying what you want to put on, keep thinking about it. Don't you feel it slipping away? Don't you feel it slipping away? The further away we get from the concept of 1776 and why we declared our independence and how we declared our independence, the further we start sliding into making 1776 a distant memory and the tenets of socialism and communism start coming into clearer focus. They're watching us. They're listening to us. They're tracking us. They get mad at you. They cancel you. They dox you. They kick you off social media. They come in and close down your business. I got banned from social media, so I got to kill somebody over it. Uh, yeah. This is who... This is the movement. That's the MAGA governor candidate in North Carolina. The previous guy was the Heritage Foundation head, the guy behind Project 2025. The MAGA movement is very open about their desire to, uh, to bring dictatorship and violence to this country, to dismantle democracy as we recognize it now and install something that doesn't even resemble democracy. And you're telling me that the entire billions of dollars in the democratic machine, all they could come up with was what we just saw from Joe Biden. And you're telling me that I shouldn't talk about that? I think that's absurd. Cross 83 responds by saying, I'm definitely not saying it's fine. It's a serious problem, and I'm well aware of the psycho-fascist. The point I'm trying to make is that the fixation on how unwell Biden is when we have zero power to change his candidacy is nearing the point of psychological self-harm. If it's psychological self-harm for you, then you don't have to watch it. You don't. You can tune out. I want people to know what we're dealing with so that we can actually push back on this shit. So that there is a chance that if we're informed on this, that we can talk to these people who are completely lost. I don't know if you know this, but the liberal sphere is so... If you think lefties are doomers, you the liberals are teetering on the edge of complete oblivion right now. The liberal sphere is totally lost. They're literally like, it's over for us. They have no answer. They have nothing. And they're wasting their time. In this stream, almost the entire stream has been focused in exactly one direction, which is convincing, giving people the tools to convince and convincing people to change their political framework permanently from fixating on backing up Joe Biden from fixating on falling in line with the Democratic Party, from, think, from only ever thinking about where you're going to drop your vote into the bucket, and instead to start thinking, how the fuck are we going to survive this shit? How the fuck are we going to connect with each other? And if we don't have the answers, start asking them now so we can start coming up with answers in time. That's what it is. And you say 
that fixating on unwell Joe is 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 like somehow out of line, but you don't understand. The, like, there's an enormous chunk of the liberal and leftist first that are trying to say everything's okay. They are literally actively doing that. My little show right now with 450 viewers, we're one of a handful of shows actually saying it's not fine at all, and this is a sign of the rot. Most every other platform out there is saying, no, we just got to vote for Joe. Maybe it sucks. Sure, he had a bad debate. There are millions of dollars circulating around to Democratic mouthpieces currently right now being paid to go and say everything's fine. Joe Biden's the candidate. Vote for Joe. I feel I have a complete right to take 40 minutes out of my stream to highlight exactly what I'm talking about. If it's self-harm for you, it's okay to tune out. It's okay to tap out. But if not, it's not help self-harm for me. This is, this is fucking grounding as shit. Because I've been saying this for way longer than this. And this is the first moment that there's been any chance that anyone else seems to be willing to listen. I've been criticizing Joe Biden on these, on these claims for a very long time. And others have been doing it even longer than I have. The anti-gaslighting zone is here. No gaslighting zone. We must acknowledge the rot. We must acknowledge the rot. Because otherwise, again, I just want to reiterate, the lefty sphere, the liberal leftist sphere, is arrested by being unable to acknowledge the rot. They can't comprehend it. They are stuck in a loop of just vote. We just got to vote for whoever's not Trump. We just got to vote for whoever's not Trump. Like a mantra. Literally, I've seen people, I have seen another content creator posting a copy-pasted response over and over and over again like a mantra. It's sick. We have to break people out of this. We have to. There was one other thing I wanted to talk about here, which was, of course, that the, the protections that Joe Biden put into place for trans people were overridden by Chevron, the Chevron decision. Let me show you. Judge cites new Supreme Court ruling in blocking health care anti-discrimination anti protections for transgender Americans. The Biden administration cannot enforce new anti-discrimination rules in health care for transgender Americans, a federal judge in Mississippi ruled on Wednesday, citing a recent landmark Supreme Court ruling, that's the Chevron decision, that weakened the power of federal agencies. The preliminary injunction, injunction from the U.S. District Judge Louis Guirola comes just two days before the new protections were set to take effect. The George W. Bush appointee said his block on the federal protections will apply nationwide. That's right. A Mississippi judge put into place by George W. Bush just decided that trans people can be discriminated against in health care nationwide. Joe Biden has not even so much as offered a solution for the Supreme Court or for the federal courts. He is being undermined at every angle. Even if Joe Biden were to win in November, this is still a problem. He has no answer for this. So I need people. I'm serious. I need people. In the left, this is what I can do, okay? I can put up, put together a nice stream, a fairly nice audio setup, and I can talk in a way that makes sense to people. And I need people to take what I have to say here and get it out. I need people to go in. I need people to see what I have to say and understand what I'm pointing at and recognize that I'm not fucking talking bullshit.
and I need them to change desperately. And I'm not the only one, okay? Right now, in this particular moment, I am advocating loudly for an entire community of people who just lost rights. You heard it here. Today, I'm being a tiny bit of an advocate, not just a content creator. If people, if the left can't change, if the left can't change on this, we're all on our own. But I believe the left can change but I believe they need to hear hard truths. Here's the article for anyone who wants to read it. All right. That's all I have to say in this particular section about Biden. Please, for the love of God, wake up. Recognize that we are in political freefall on a federal level and that it is time to change our political analysis. It is time for us to build networks Together, it is time for us to consolidate our skills and build power of resistance so that we can survive even if it gets dark. Thank you for watching. I have a lot more to say in the future. Tell me what you think below. Thank you.